Hey guys, it's Don with DiverDonScuba.com. Today we're going to talk about double hose regulators. Vintage scuba diving has been a passion of mine for a number of years. I have several videos, for example, on YouTube showing me using some of these regulators here. Uh, if you find it interesting or if you yourself have a double hose regulator, let me know in the comment section down below. At the end of the video, I'm going to put a playlist together where you can just click on it and it'll go through all my vintage scuba uh, videos. There will also be some information on where you can find parts for these things. If you um, want to pick this up as, as a hobby, you can uh, definitely get some of these back in working order. Some are going to be harder to find parts for than others, but the Healthways here, for example, you can find new diaphragms, hoses, and so forth for this. Same goes for my U.S. divers and the Voight, which use essentially the same uh, diaphragm and equipment uh, parts, if you will, as the U.S. divers. So stick around. We're going to go through all this stuff. Okay, so guys, the way these things operate, the regulator is hooked up to your tank, which is right here. You can see the yoke right there. When you inhale, air comes into the right hose. When you exhale, it comes out of the left hose over your left shoulder. It comes out of these holes here and exhausts behind you, which is kind of nice if you're into photography. Um, the bubbles aren't in your face obstructing your view and fish actually seem to be a little less scared of you uh, because you don't have all this noise in these bubbles. Taking this apart to show you a couple of the parts inside. The main diaphragm and the exhaust diaphragm. Again the air comes in this side, that's what's hooked up to the tank. Goes out that way, that's your exhaust. I'm going to breathe off the regulator. You'll see this diaphragm collapse into this box, into the bottom box. That would, if there was a tank hooked up to it, activate a couple of levers in here and cause air to flow through the system. When I inhale, this will collapse and stay there because I have in this mouthpiece a couple of one-way valves that keeps water from flowing in. If it were introduced to the system, if I spit the regulator out, for example, it won't travel up into, into the regulator. When I exhale, you'll see this activate. This will not pop back up because of those one-way valves. So air is designed to travel this way through the loop and that's all it's going to do. Okay, so I inhaled, collapsed the uh, main diaphragm. When I exhale, you'll see the duckbill valve flap. And again, the main diaphragm didn't move because um, of the one-way valves in the mouthpiece. So I'm going to show you the basic operation levers here which will push on this pin which is what activates the air flow I'll push on that wish I can get a better close-up for you but that's about as good as I can get it and the diaphragm goes in here now I'm going to inhale you'll see this collapse and again you can imagine the air coming in this hose and going out the other hose you'll you'll see the exhaust valve of course And that's the way that works. So here I have an original yoke from an older double hose regulator. You'll notice it's pretty thin and short. This new one here that I put on uh, is a longer yoke that enables me to hook up what's called a banjo. A banjo is something that you can add a gauge to. So you can actually sandwich the gauge between the tank and this regulator. So you can know exactly how much air you have in your tank. These were designed originally to work with low pressure, well, lower pressure than what we're used to today. Modern scuba cylinders are 3000 PSI aluminum tanks. The older ones, 2050, 2475, somewhere around there. You really don't want to use a 3000 PSI tank on a Mistral, okay? There are other ones, more to come. Okay guys, I have one more thing I want to show you about this before I bring on another regulator. And this is my banjo. You'll see on this regulator I have a longer yoke. And it's kind of shiny, it doesn't look like the old brushed aluminum that we have on the other, on the body of the regulator. That's because it's an aftermarket component that you can add to a Mistral or a DA Aqualung, what have you. Um, and it enables you to sandwich this piece of equipment between your tank and your regulator. This is a banjo. 
It goes right here between your tank and your tank valve and your regulator and you hook it up to a gauge and now you can tell how much air you have in your tank. Okay guys, I have one more regulator I wanna show you. This is my D8 Aqualung. It's a two-stage double hose regulator which means it reduces the pressure in the tank from high pressure to ambient pressure in two stages. The nice thing about that is I can change the first stage, for example, uh, with this Phoenix conversion. The nice thing about this is you'll see all these ports here. Well, I can hook up my dry suit to this and use it on New Year's Day like I did a couple of years ago. There'll be videos at the end. It has high pressure ports so I can hook up a gauge so I know how much air I have left in my tank. I have several low pressure ports actually so I can hook up a BCD with a power inflator if I so choose. I have a port for a safe second, an octopus, whatever you want to call it. So this is a modern regulator um, married to a cool piece of vintage gear. Looks great, has the benefit of the exhaust coming out of the back and it looks really neat but it's modern in that you can use modern gear with it. So I also replaced the second stage in this regulator um, with an HPR, a high performing regulator. It um, makes it a lot easier to breathe and use in the lake. You're gonna, you're gonna love it if you get one of these yourself. Uh, again, there will be links in the description down below. Check it out. I've got a new diaphragm in here and there's one last thing I wanna show you. I have to take it apart though. We'll do that whole close up thing again. Okay guys, here's a look inside my DA Aqualung, the one with the Phoenix conversion. And you don't see a duckbill here. Instead you see this device, which is a duckbill eliminator. It enables me to use standard mushroom valves, which are easier to replace, provide better flow, and um, it's the same thing that's found in your mouthpiece, these one-way mushroom valves. So uh, you might want to consider one of them instead of a standard duck bell. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I've got the playlist coming up here any second now, and there's going to be some links to some other things I want you to take a look at. I appreciate uh, you watching the video, and as always, dive safe.